Hello everyone, uh, today we are going to talk about the GraphQL and the latest addition to the Salesforce uh, API that is the GraphQL API. So let's start. Uh, firstly, what is GraphQL? So GraphQL is an open source data query and manip manipulation language for APIs uh, which was developed by Facebook in 2012 and uh, began publicly released in 2015. So uh, Graph QL provides a complete and understandable description of your data in your API. So you can make callouts to your uh, endpoint. So there will be a single endpoint to make all calls to the server. And uh, you can uh, query the data and uh, based on the fields you need and uh, you can get them uh, details about the metadata, the specification, the relationship between the fields. So basically it gives client the power to ask uh, for exactly what they need and nothing more, making it easier for APIs uh, to evolve over time and enable more powerful developer tools. Uh, so this was all about GraphQL. So let's talk ab about what is GraphQL API. So GraphQL API is a, uh, the GraphQL API is a new paradigm of sending and receiving data, offering developers a single endpoint to call for all data needed in one request, as I said, there will be a single endpoint uh, to which uh, we need to make a call to get all the data. And uh, unlike the traditional REST calls, where there will be different endpoints for different objects, uh, in GraphQL there will there will only be a single endpoint. So this API allows developers to interact with the Salesforce platform through GraphQL, and GraphQL is a standard query language for APIs, uh, which I explained earlier. Uh, so uh, basically the apps that call GraphQL APIs are often uh, have much more better performance uh, than the traditional REST APIs. Uh, the reason for that is uh, there are, uh, they are able to reduce the round trips to the server uh, and they are able to retrieve all the necessary data in just a single invocation uh, which reduces the number of round trips and uh, indeed the loading time for the page. So now with the spring 20, summer 22 release, uh, the Salesforce QL API will launch into the beta version and uh, substantially uh, will be uh, more features will be added to it and it will be made GA. Uh, so this was about GraphQL API uh, that Salesforce has supported for uh, with the summer 22 release. Uh, now let's discuss the uh, limitations of the traditional REST APIs. So uh, the first one is the field selection. Uh, so let's say like uh, this is this is the example which I took from the Salesforce blog. So uh, let's say you want to query a user's phone number. So most likely, most likely you'll make, you you are going to make a REST API call to the endpoint uh, slash services slash u s object slash user and to get the uh, details for the phone number. So rather than just retrieving the phone number, uh, you will get uh, many fields. So everything returned back to you that isn't the user's phone number is a wasted data. So uh, now with GraphQL, there will be a single endpoint and uh, within the client uh, request body, you can define that I need these fields and uh, for that uh, only those fields would be returned and data would be returned only for those fields. And this feature uh, is uh, that is provided by GraphQL is known as field selection that you, you would be able to select the fields for which you need the data and uh, not every field would be returned. Let's discuss resource aggregation. So resource aggregation is like uh, which allows the client to specify a traversal across the fields uh, through the GraphQL schema. So uh, basically you can uh, define multiple objects in the single call like for an account you can define the contacts and uh, for other uh, relationships also. So uh, you can define the aggregation. So basically this reduces the number of round trip between client and server. And uh, uh, so unlike uh, REST, uh, where you you would have to make multiple calls with aggregation uh, in the GraphQL API, uh, you would be able to do it in the less number of calls, uh, which will improve the loading time. So uh, GraphQL QA, uh, GraphQL API solves this problem by allowing for resource aggregation and the ability to retrieve all the data your app needs in just one request. The third one is the schema introspection. So uh, with the help of the schema introspection uh, in the GraphQL API, you would be able to ask questions like uh, what are the types, fields and their relationship within the schema. 
when all the patterns are co combined it results in more responsive higher and quality applications like you want to know the relationship between two fields and uh, like what are the object uh, what are the fields present on that object and uh, the other stuff related to the metadata so you can use the schema introspection so this ability is being provided by the graphql and uh, the best part is like there is no different endpoints there is only a single endpoint to make that call uh, now the question is what will happen to traditional rest apis so uh, salesforce say, says that even though there are, are imperfections with the traditional rest apis uh, this to, uh, they still do have a place and they will not be dropped so you will still be able to use the traditional rest apis no matter uh, the, uh, like uh, the adva the advances in the graphql api so uh, now we have some sample queries so uh, for that we'll do a demo from postman and i'll show you how to make a postman call and uh, give the body for the graphql queries and how uh, response would be returned so a uh, response would be returned by uh, these two keywords data and errors data would contain all the data and errors would contain the errors so now let's uh, jump back to postman and now we are in postman and uh, i'll show you how to make a postman call uh, to salesforce uh, that would be a call in and uh, i've already explained this in one of my video i'll share the link you can view that apart from that i'll quickly explain how to make a call firstly you need to make a connected app in your salesforce uh, and uh, within the connected app you'll have to choose the oauth scopes and firstly you'll have to select the enable oauth settings and you have to choose the oauth scopes you'll have to give the callback url and i guess that's all uh, some uh, default settings would be checked you can uh, keep it checked and uh, you can give access to of this connected app for the system admin profile or whatever profiles uh, you wanted to access so uh, now you'll go back to postman uh, you will open a new works uh, workspace uh, after that uh, you can click on that plus icon in the plus icon you will uh, get the uh, this this type of page where you can make a request so firstly to make a request to salesforce you need to authorize so for authorization you'll uh, select the oauth 2.0 scope so we'll make uh, we'll authorize with salesforce using oauth 2.0 uh, so after that you'll uh, give the callback url you can select the authorize using browser uh, we'll have the auth url the access token url uh, you can see that the authorization URL is so slash services slash or two slash authorize and the access token is slash services slash or two slash token Then you are then you have to give the client ID and the client secret uh, You can get that from the connected app uh, if you click on this manage consumer details You'll get the consumer key and the consumer secret So that is equivalent to client ID and the client secret here uh, You can give the scope. Uh, I've given it full scope and uh, lastly there is a client authentication uh, so there are two options send as basic author or send client credentials in the body so you'll have to select the uh, send client client credentials in the body and after that uh, just click on get a uh, new access token uh, it would open the browser uh, you just choose open postman so token has been added for me so now what i'll do is uh, i'll go to headers in the headers you can see the in the authorization bearer slash token has been added and i'll go to the body uh, in the body you'll have to select the graphql uh, option provided by postman and uh, here uh, you'll have to make a post request uh, only the post request and your url would be your my domain uh, my domain dot uh, salesforce.com slash services slash data slash version slash graph ql so as you know the url would be same for uh, multi any kind of uh, request we make so i'll uh, quickly explain you the body so firstly uh, we'll have to use the keyword query uh, like since we are doing a query and you can name it anything so since i'll be querying accounts i've named it accounts uh, now so this is basically kind of like a root element so salesforce says that uh, uh, all the objects supported by uh, ui api user interface api are supported so the root element would be ui api uh, inside this ui api you would have a query keyword and since we are doing a query 
and uh, subsequently, uh, subsequently you'll have name it account since we are making a account uh, query within that account you'll have edges and nodes and in the nodes you'll contain the fields so uh, currently i have two fields id and name uh, name uh, i just want to retrieve the value of the name so i have input value and uh, that's all like if i need any other value i can add that value and provide the uh, like kind of uh, the field name so let's uh, send a query and see the response click on the send icon here so it says the response is status 200 okay i got the response and see it's the response i told you uh, the response would be sent in the data uh, key so uh, in the key we have uh, edges nodes and within the nodes we have these values the id is this the name is this id name and there are no errors so it's so now uh, this was the response now let me do one more query that would be a little complex one uh, Uh, so here uh, we want to query all the opportunities which are not closed. So I have named this request as opportunities not closed. And uh, uh, so, uh, the, the things are the same. I, I'll use the UI API root tag and then the query keyword. Then I'll since I'm querying opportunity, I've, I've uh, written opportunity. And here uh, I want a where clause where uh, where not not stage name is equal to closed one or stage name is equal to close lost so these are the conditions so these are or and uh, we want the not since uh, we want the stage name is not equal to closed in one and subsequently uh, we have the edges and we have the nodes in the edges and node will define the fields id next step close date description stage name etc uh, so the URL is still the same. I'm making a post request. Uh, the authorization is done. I'll just click on send. And uh, we have got the response. You can see we have uh, the response is returned to us successfully. Uh, so these are all the field values. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's all for this demo. Uh, this was kind of like a basic demo to make you understand the GraphQL API. I'll share the links uh, in the video description. You can go through them to understand more complex queries. Uh, also, Salesforce has provided us this uh, Postman queries uh, template. You can use them and uh, you can uh, use uh, these queries, the body for these queries to retrieve the results. For example, these are uh, the queries for contacts by their account name. Opportunities not closed, which I've used. Opportunities early stage. So yeah, you can you can check this for uh, more information on that. So that's all for this session. And if you want such more such videos, you can uh, subscribe the channel. I'll upload more in the future. Thank you. Thanks everyone for watching the video.